Okay, fur, drawing our pets. All of these photographs that I've um, put there, with the exception of a smudge, of course, have come from a website called Unsplash. U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H. I will try to remember to put a link underneath this video. The reason why I am being um, careful to tell you about Unsplash is because they have free photographs online. Many people use stock photographs, so that's the name of photographs that are available um, for use in adverts and all of that sort of thing, but usually you have to pay for them. And unsplash.com allows you to um, use their photographs for free. So people upload their photographs for the pure pleasure and it is very, very nice to give them some credit for that. Um, the, the panda's face is quite clear. There's no foreshortening that we have to worry about. So the grid is probably slightly less important in this instance. Um, but if you're ever worried about proportions, the grid is the best way to do it. And in fact, now that I do actually have the grid, I will point out to you that the eyes of this panda are not halfway down. So um, even though your head doesn't tell you that eyes are halfway down with people, now that you've been drawing for a little bit, your head might say, oh, let's use the proportions that we know that Karen's taught us before. Um, but it doesn't apply automatically to everything you look at. So in this case, the panda's eyes are about three quarters of the way up. So um, don't forget to look at proportions individually and differently, depending on what it is that you are looking at. Okay. The first thing I want to say about drawing animals is that they are also, as every, oh, excuse me, got a bit of hiccups. As everything we draw, they are three dimensional. So when we draw them, we need to depict shadow shading to show that they are three dimensional. So that guy's face is quite round, like a, like a ball. And I'm going to draw a generic round shape there. You can probably only just see it. Wouldn't the muzzle be foreshortened? Yeah, good point, Heather. Um, I guess it is a bit foreshortened, but we can easily um, place where things are, not worry about the foreshortening, because we've got a way of looking at that slap bang. I was about to say slap bang in the middle, but it's not. Um, if we look at the shape of the muzzle there, we've kind of got um, a flattened look already and I don't think we'll have too much trouble with that. But you are absolutely correct. Technically, that muzzle is most definitely foreshortened. Um, it's probably not quite as foreshortened, for example, as our, um, our fox. Um, the fox is actually looking down, so he's not that foreshortened in this instance. But if he were looking up and the nose were there, we'd have this long snout quite foreshortened. And I'm not sure that pandas have got such a long snout, but you're absolutely correct. Um, hello to you, Lois. Okay, so if we're looking at our um, sphere... The bottom half, most of the light is coming from the top of this panda and therefore the shading is going to be underneath. So this is not technically how to draw fur. This is just explaining that we still need to have shadow. And the snout, the foreshortened snout, has got shading, more shading underneath it there. Whoops, you can't see that. More shading there than it has on top so if I am half closing my eyes there's shadow there and there's shadow here now it also looks like his fur is slightly darker there so that makes our task even more easy okay what's the trick to fur first of all first of all ha 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 
Um, don't try and draw all of it, especially if it is white fur, of course, like we have with the panda. So the urge is to draw every single fur bit of hair sticking out. But you can see from my little suggestion there that my pencil is dark and I am depicting those white hairs with dark marks. So that's a little bit of a conundrum when we get to drawing um, fur that's white. We have difficulty with that. And what we need to think about are the darks in between the lights, which is not very easy at all. Um, so what's easier is to not concentrate on each and every hair and think about our mark making, which of course most of you have seen my mark making video. So what you would do instead, I just bend that so I haven't got it. Um, doesn't matter if you can't see my picture because you can see the, um, the other picture there. So what we're actually looking for is a suggestion of the hair. Okay, now it looks like I am gonna use my photo after all. And the negative shape, the dark inside his mouth, there on the edges those shadows the edges here as the background comes into the white hair the edges of the white hair over the black ears there tiny tiny you can't see that because it's so tiny but if you zoom into the um to the photograph uh, a bit later you'll be able to see so it's a case of drawing the negative, drawing the background and leaving a suggestion of the fur on the edges. Now, I know this is very, very tiny work. So what I might do, I don't think you can see that terribly well. So what I might do is exaggerate it. Please don't draw like I'm drawing. I'm showing you the principle so that you can see what I'm doing because I don't think you're going to get this very delicate work that I've got here. So I'm going to do it in much larger. There you go. Uh, in a much larger way. This is a bit dark, although I guess it's not that dark compared with with the ear. But these lines here are much bigger, probably than you'll end up with. Okay, so all of those tiny lines that you can see are representing the hair that's sticking out. Now, I mean representing, I don't mean that they are identical. Okay, so even as the, as the background changes from a dark ear, now I wasn't focusing on an ear, so let's say I focus on the ear. I might, even though I can't see hair there, I might use mark making to colour in this ear. Now actually I, I put those marks on top of some general colouring in. So there isn't a line around there. I drew that line to know where things were, but that's a dangerous thing to do because I can still see it there. It's difficult to get rid of it. So even if you've done some straight shading like that, if it's really dark, you can come on top to suggest the mark of hair. And then at the side of the head, you can... Um, leave the edge of the ear as a negative shape behind that white hair. It's not easy. Okay, so here in the background, maybe I'll do something a bit lighter.
and it's just a suggestion of the hairs on the edge there okay so you can see that i've done it fairly clumsily i haven't been too delicate because i want you to be able to see what's going on there are um more long hairs being shown further down on this image so you can use and i don't think i've got it ready did i silly billy let's just have a quick look to see if it's here what i'm actually looking for is um, i've got a tiny tiny eraser i i don't actually want to get into into you know erasing out each and every hair so if you take your your kneadable eraser i've made a little ridge on that and sort of fluff up the edge then you will enhance that rather than rubbing out each and every hair because that's what your head wants to do and what i'm trying to get you not to do is to draw each and every hair or even rub out each and every hair okay so let's get back to these um, um this hair underneath the nose so or, or even on top of the nose um where it's quite dark and light it's definitely not as light as that but it's not as as dark as that even the nose is darker underneath than it is on the top so I am not drawing this in proportion, guys. I'm going to put the nose there. Obviously, the nose isn't way up here. Actually, I'll put it down here. But, it's, but I'm not drawing in proportion. Please be aware of that. So I'm putting the shape of the, of the, um, the nose in. I'm not too um, fussed on that at the moment because I want to show you about the hair, the fur okay so here it is um the black and white is a bit more obvious and those marks that i said earlier you remember when i was showing you these marks here they may work a little bit better here because you've got lots more dark but even as i'm doing that now I can see that I am putting way too much dark on. So I'm going to go to my old trick and close, half close my eyes and I can see that there's a smudge of gray there and a smudge of gray there. So don't do that. See, I have to tell myself these things as well. So here I am putting some marks where the grey inner bit is. Let me just shade that in so that you can see what's going on. And I am going to leave this um, edge under the nose. And um, I'm going to leave that light because that's what I'm seeing in the photograph. And I am just gently putting in. Okay, so that's what my head told me to do. And I went slap bang into it. I fell right into the trap. And then when I thought about it a little bit and I observed, that's when I saw, no, actually, Karen, don't do that. And then the inside of his mouth, I can go a little bit darker. And if I do the same technique that I did over here, I should get these little tiny edges of white hairs working for me. Now I'm going to help myself a bit by putting the shape of his snout there. Now we come to some darker hair. So this whole section here is much darker than that section. And so we have, again, this technique happening. And it is mark making in the direction of the hair rather than that. Okay, so try not to get too involved in 
drawing the hairs. How many times have I said that? Is anyone taking count? Let's see who we have on board. We have uh, Leslie Mitchell. Hello from an overcast Durban. Nice to see you. So I'm going to take those out. I don't like those marks at all. And I am going to continue. Now, there's a longer changeover between how long these white hairs are and how dark those are. So I can keep much broader, much longer, not broader, shapes there. Can you see what's happening? I hope you can. Um, now I'm looking at tiny things. My brain is zooming into the tiny things. And I'm going, Karen, you're teaching these people how to do things. Don't zoom in to the tiny areas of white at the moment. Just get the general shape. So I actually have not looked at the, um, the shape of the mouth, which I'm doing now. So the inside of his mouth is there. And his teeth are sticking up. So I haven't been paying much attention to the whole proportion at the moment. I'm just showing you the technique of getting the fur in using these negative shapes and mark making. So I said that this was the inside of his mouth, but it actually is quite narrow there if I'm really paying attention. Can you see my instinct was to go in that direction, which is not particularly useful for the edge which has got hair. So even I'm finding it difficult, but I'm realizing, trying to um, find these pitfalls. Okay, so that's not looking very much like the bear's mouth, but I hope that you can see um, the transition between the dark inside the mouth, a hairy edge, slight um, dark there. If you find that it's too dark, use your kneadable eraser to um, lighten it off a bit. Now, the edge of the nose has got a, a stronger edge. So the hair is not going up into the nose. That sort of rubbery nose is, is um, stuck right on. Okay, so that is the basic technique for getting hair. Do not overdo it. You are very, very welcome and encouraged to leave all of these areas with no marks on at all. So if you remember from my mark making um, video, don't put marks where the lightest light is, even though there is hair there. Um, hello, Elizabeth. Nice to see you. Um, okay, so my head is doing exactly what your head's going to do and i'm wanting to put all these hairs on there i'm going don't do it okay you've got the lovely edge of these um so let's carry on with our ear over there i'm doing this very very quickly quick and nasty don't be as quick as me i'm just putting this down very quickly so that i can show you the technique once you've got these lovely little hairs showing, you only need to suggest some of them, maybe, you know, around there where you can see a, a bit dark. Again, excuse me, I'm not working to proportion. Clearly, this is way further down. This is not a bear's head. <laughs> in case you've come in in the middle, I am not drawing the whole panda. I'm drawing bits and pieces of him to show you how to go about it. So if you want to put these hairs in, put them in here where you can see more of the darks and the shadows. And again, his dark fur and his light fur, they come together it's kind of like that. You know, the dark hair and the light hair something like that. So don't put harsh edges along the edge.
His eyes are really, really tiny. And in fact, there's a tiny thin white line there. And that is the light hitting his bottom lid. But this is all about how to draw the fur. So I don't particularly want to keep going. He's got some lovely long um, dark hair there. So you can, if you've got the urge to draw a hair, that's where you draw it. So I hope that that has given you a bit of a heads up on how to go about this fur. Where there are longer ones, then use longer strokes so that the bits in between your, your mark making look like longer hair. The thing that I want to show you now is um, probably the most difficult thing to do for animals, um, animal fur, and that is when you get these very, very strong white whiskers. Um, in the case of this kitty, obviously you can see very strong white whiskers there, and you can also see we've got hairs there, we've got white hairs there, and we've got, you know, little white hairs on the top and we've got white hairs on the ear and we've got a thin edge of hair over there. So we've got quite a lot of um, hair. But what I mostly want to show you is how to do these beautiful long white whiskers because you don't want to draw them dark. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you now. And it's a lovely little trick. Um, and there are a couple of ways of doing it. I have in front of me a pin. Um, and I might just turn my book around. So we're getting the that funny um, panda out the way. I've got a pin. And the other thing that I've got to show you is a very, very hard pencil. Now, you can see, let me just see what you can see, because I can't see. I can't see what you can see, what I can see. I was given this set uh, by a lovely student of mine and friend, and it is a set of 22 pencils, 22 degrees. It goes from 10B to 10H. And I'm not sure if you know this yet, but 10H, H stands for hard and B stands for black. In the middle of that, we've got a B and HB and an F. I really don't know what F is. It might be fine. So um, many people draw with the whole range of these pencils. Um, I very, very seldom do. So you can see in my set that the... The ones that have been sharpened the most are on the B side. And in fact, my 2B is missing. It's probably elsewhere because I use 2B all the time. Um, and you can see that the H side does not get used at all. But today, I'm actually going to use the 10H. So what that means is the the amount of clay that is mixed with the graphite in that tip is a lot. And that point remains pointy and hard, H for hard, for a long time. And in fact, if you're using pencils in maths, you would use this pencil to do um, graphs and things like that. And no matter how hard you press, that's as dark as I can get with that pencil but I'm actually making grooves in the pencil, in the page, and that's what I want it for. Um, I know that some people do this with a white pencil. Kids often do this, but, um, you know, white colored pencil, but I don't think they are hard enough for what we want. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper. I was experimenting before and I am going to draw over, so practice this, I am going to press very hard. Can you hear that sound? Oh, it's going right down my back. 
And what's happened, I know you can't see it yet, is there have been some lines gouged out in this paper. Now, I'm going to take this pin. Now, this pin is a um, for a cork board. It's not a dressmaking pin, which might be a little bit thin. And I'm going to put some... I'm going to scratch in some um, whiskers there as well. Now, you can scratch, uh, especially if you're using the, the pin, you can, you know, let's say that's where your kitty's head is going to be. You, go, you can put your whiskers in directly with the pin. If you don't want it to go underneath, make sure you put something firm underneath, a bit of cardboard, so that it doesn't go right the way through and you end up with whiskers on all your drawings. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my soft pencil. This down here is where I, I used my very, very hard pencil. And if I color over, okay, that was the pen. I mean, that was the pin. Can you see it happening? Ah, there we go. I need to do it. You'll be able to see it better on your own work. I need to press quite hard for you to be able to see it. Are you seeing it yet? I'm seeing it beautifully, but I'm not sure that you are. I think that the light is shining too much. Okay, so the f those ones there, let's see what happens if I turn the light off. Does that help? Not really. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Okay. Um, so you, I'll, I'll, I'll draw a little bit harder so that you can see those lines. Okay, so those were from this hard pencil and these were from the pin. So if we go to our kitty now, where I drew it directly on the page, you can see that there are really nice whiskers left. Okay, now some of you might be saying, well, I don't want to just color in like that. Don't worry. Let's, let's go on to a nice clean piece of paper. What you will be doing Sorry, just looking back at my kitty. What you will be doing is drawing your kitty or whatever animal you're doing. You know, gently, I'm not even sure if you can see this here because I'm holding the pen right at the top and I'm gently looking at the proportions. I'm not doing, um, I'm not concentrating very hard because I'm talking to you guys at the same time but just to show you how you would go about it isn't that interesting I put my line like that and when I actually paid attention to the cat I think the line is slightly in that direction Okay, so settling in. Now I'm getting involved in drawing the cat. There's some foreshortening underneath. We've got... Um, can you see that at all? Looks a bit light. So... I'm gently putting in the parameters of the cat. I've just widened him there and this eye is actually much closer to the edge than that is. Okay, what I'm trying to show you is how you will draw those around those um, whiskers that we put in without putting that very heavy um, shading in. So now I'm going to, goodness, show you that cat again. There you go. 
Um, now I know where to put my whiskers because if you didn't have that plan, you wouldn't need to know where you wouldn't know where your whiskers are going to go. And my first instinct was to draw them coming out of the snout there. And I've just noticed that they're actually coming out of here, right on the side of the head. So a heads up, a pitfall. Watch out where these things are coming from, okay? So, in fact, there's some lines of, um, not you're going to use that one, that's too strong. There are some um, sort of marks on the kitty where the lines are coming out from, where the whiskers are coming out from. Now I can draw the whiskers. And unlike when I demonstrated when I drew these hard three lines like that, okay, I'm now going to actually draw them with a little bit more um, thought, a little bit more intention of them actually looking like whiskers. And a good idea here is to either turn your page over because it's going to be difficult to do those sort of things or use your, your left hand because I want that nice movement coming out like that. And you can see on the, on the photograph that where the whiskers are going out into the light, they are not nearly as strong. So now the thing that I was showing you with the panda, you start doing here. You forget that you've done those whiskers and you start putting your mark making in. And I'm hoping that the whiskers will start to stand out as we continue drawing. Now I can already see them standing out. I'm not sure that you can yet um, because of the camera focus. So the whole edge of the kitty's face is a bit like the edge of the panda's face. It's got there's lots of fur. I haven't done all of these. I might do a few more. Actually, there are quite a few happening there. Now, don't worry about your pencil going in the same direction as the whiskers. Your, the, the, the gap that the whiskers is leaving from your pin, from your pin, is much narrower than your pencil so your pencil won't go in to there you can also use you can buy a stylus so there are special styluses for engraving which is what this is called you can also use a ballpoint pen that's run out of ink you can use the tip of a knitting needle so you can of course go wider Now, in this particular photograph, the photographer has focused on the cat's face, and so the rest of the body is quite blurred, which is a very, very difficult thing to draw. I chose it simply so that I could show you um, how to do this technique. Now, I'm a bit concerned there that all the... <laughs> The hair's all splaying out like a fan. So I'm actually going to just do some light shading without worrying about the fact that it's hair. So that I can increase the contrast for those whiskers 
because where those whiskers are going over the light part of the cat's fur, they are not as noticeable. <laughs> Jasmika says when she was drawing she was wondering how to draw a moustache. Be careful with t this technique. You can, um, it can, you can get away with, you can, um, it can, can't think of what I'm trying to say. Uh, you can go too far with it. Don't go too crazy. Okay, once again I'm not really paying attention to the shape of the, of the cat. In fact, her body is down there. Um, and it hasn't got a line on it. So it is the technique that I am showing you. Okay, so quite a nice technique, that one. I really do like it. Um, this, th this pin might not even be thick enough for the width of those particular... Um, whiskers they are pretty strong those whispers whispers uh, whiskers the technique with charcoal is very very similar it is much easier obviously to get um, the furry fading um, out of focus hair and you can use a paper stump to help blend and you can use your thinned out eraser so for your whiskers you might find that that eraser works for you that looks quite good there so that's on charcoal I wonder how well it will work on pencil. Yep, it's a little bit more clumsy with pencil, so pro that's uh, not a good idea. But with the charcoal, the charcoal moves so easily that you can um, make it work. Now, a hint with your kneadable eraser, don't bring it just to a little point like that because it, <laughs> it says, says me and it works. Um, but what happens is this bends and gets flat very, very quickly. So what I tend to do is make a ridge. Can you see that that's a, a ridge there? I don't know. I'm trying to see. Yeah, something like that. There you go. So that you've got a bit of force behind this whole um, rubber. I see people also doing this sort of thing. I find that the whole idea of holding something so tiny in your hand to draw with gets a little bit twee. So even though it made that mark, um, you start getting a little bit precious with it. So um, be careful of that. Okay, the last thing that I want to mention um, with these animals is foreshortening again, because um, we spoke about that about faces looking towards you and all of that sort of thing. However, um, what I want to point out is very often, okay, this line is not as foreshortened as sometimes. Um, but what I'll point out in the lion's case while I've got that up there are these negative shapes, negative shapes, negative shapes, negative shapes. Okay, negative shapes being these triangles here, okay? Don't forget about them because one of the watch points when you are doing animals is extending, making this tummy way too long, drawing the body like that. And in fact, this... this um, line might be a little bit foreshortened so when you've got an animal three quarters coming towards you your head will think that it is sideways on and you will draw this long animal and put the legs there and have this long tummy and it doesn't doesn't exist 
I think I might just swap my camera around so that you can see the whole of that. There you go. Doesn't that ele <laughs> elephant, doesn't that line look a bit weird with such a long body? So don't forget to look at this shape. You can even look at what is the proportion? How wide is that section compared to how long that section is? Okay, is it more or less a square? Is it a triangle? Where's the top of this triangle compared with how high that leg is? Where, if you put a line across, a lion across, full of bad puns today, you know, his haunch there is level with his nose, okay? If I hadn't looked at that specifically, I prob probably would have drawn the bottom of his leg down here, okay? It is extremely important, even between the tail and the back leg. Please, please don't forget about um, looking at where these horizontal lines and even where the vertical lines are. So that front paw is just on the side of his eye. If we take a line across there, his eyes are more or less halfway. So please think of those negative shapes when you are drawing. That's back to our kitty. There's back to our, who else have I got here? Besides smudge. Ah, this one. This is the, the one I really wanted to show you for the foreshortening. Okay, we have a sense of his leg at the back. Unless we look at these negative shapes here, we wouldn't get a sense of how tiny, tiny that back paw is compared with the size of this front paw. Okay? Please, please pay attention to that because what happens in your head is I'm going to draw a paw, therefore the back paw is going to look like the front paw and all of that sort of thing. Now, even this paw is coming towards us. And in fact, I think that hair there is part of the same, uh, is the spread out fur of that paw. Um, and look how short his body is. That's the bottom of his body, and that's the top of his body, his main section. Obviously, I'm not including his head. And that, look how short that is. Okay, it's not quite a square, but it's nearly a square. So please, please, please pay attention to these proportions. Especially because you are using a photograph, it is very easy to look at that. And if we measure his head, I'm just going to measure it quickly with my, yeah, with my uh, uh, thumb and pencil. The size of that is about three quarters of the of the body. So we've got all of these proportions that are going to help us. In fact the head might fit into a square. I deliberately did uh, found that photograph to show you um, to pay attention to these negative shapes around so that you can get that dog drawn beautifully. Goodbye from Karen Frankel and of course get drawing. Bye bye.